Well, how many Raptor engines are there? 100? 200? 300? All is not correct. Yes, there probably have to be up to 400 engines, maybe even more. This represents a significant advancement, not just in sheer numbers, but also in the continuous refinement of SpaceX's techniques over time. That's insane. I'm sure the entire NASA Artemis team must have exclaimed just like me when witnessing this during their latest visit to Starbase. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. How is SpaceX shocking the NASA Artemis team over and over again at Starbase? The Raptor is the engine that propels the world's largest rocket, playing a pivotal role in propelling humanity beyond the limits of Earth. With a total of 39 Raptor engines required for each Starship stack, it'll generate millions of pounds of thrust. This will result in the continuous launch of hundreds to thousands of Starships in the future. Therefore, SpaceX's responsibility in producing these engines quickly and efficiently is substantial. Until now, we've been quite curious about the actual number of engines produced by SpaceX. However, most information on this matter remains speculative, based on tests conducted by the company, and there is no specific figure available. In fact, Elon Musk has expressed ambitious goals to increase the production volume of the Raptor engine. Initially, the target was set at producing one engine every 48 hours, then elevated to one engine per day by 2022. Musk's aspirations further soared, aiming for the unprecedented goal of manufacturing between two to four Raptor engines daily, surpassing the boundaries of traditional rocket engine production. While SpaceX has not yet achieved the target of producing four engines per day, they've relentlessly pushed their limits, progressing each day towards a milestone unmatched by any other company in rocket engine manufacturing. This was evident in a tweet by Pam Melroy, NASA's deputy administrator, during a visit to SpaceX facilities on October 31st as part of NASA's Human Landing System, HLS, for the Artemis program. The HLS Lunar Lander, a customized variant of the Starship, utilizes Raptor engines for liftoff and landing, similar to the Super Heavy booster. From her commemorative photo, we can see Melroy standing in front of fully assembled Raptor engines with a specific serial number 398 displayed on the engine nozzle in the top left corner. She also expressed her joy through her status update. Had a fantastic day. It was a productive visit where we were briefed on the HLS program, got a glimpse of Raptor development, and witnessed the impressive Dragon production in action. This not only shows that all activities related to the future of HLS have been systematically arranged, but also showcases the exceptional manufacturing process of SpaceX's engine production. To put this in perspective, the Raptor 2 rocket engine produces approximately 510,000 pounds of thrust. This is almost identical to the amount of thrust produced by the RS-25 engine that will be used to power NASA's Space Launch System rocket. This engine was designed and developed by Rocketdyne in the 1970s for the Space Shuttle program, and the company has decades of experience manufacturing them. In 2015, NASA gave Aerojet Rocketdyne a contract worth $1.16 billion to restart the production line for the RS-25 engine. Again, that was money just to re-establish manufacturing facilities, not build the engines. NASA is paying more than $100 million for each of those. With this startup funding, the goal was for Aerojet Rocketdyne to produce four of these engines per year. Meanwhile, as of now, SpaceX has produced nearly 400 rocket engines, and this number is expected to increase significantly in the coming times as Starship awaits launch approval from the FAA. This is a considerable figure compared to the entire U.S. space industry. Why can SpaceX achieve this? It's precisely due to the crucial innovation that SpaceX is aiming for partly in the iterative design process that's shaping the development of the Raptor engine. The strategic embrace of high-volume production catalyzes rapid iteration and continuous design enhancements. In the dynamic realm of rocket engineering, the ability to swiftly adapt and refine is paramount. SpaceX engineers are rising to the occasion with each iteration of the Raptor engine. A poignant example of this iterative prowess is evident in the comparison between Raptor versions. As the program progresses, SpaceX has not merely replicated past successes, but actively sought to surpass them. The transition from the initial Raptor to the current Raptor 2 represents a paradigm shift in design philosophy. 
Noteworthy is the substantial reduction in weight achieved by SpaceX engineers, shaving off an impressive 400 kilograms from the engine's total weight. Simultaneously, they've amplified the engine's thrust by elevating the combustion chamber pressure from 250 to 300 bar. This transformative leap in performance underscores the benefits derived from a design process that thrives on high volume production. Elon Musk's perspective on this iterative journey is illuminating, embracing the freedom to experiment and push boundaries. The accelerated pace of production allows for a tolerance for failure, a luxury not afforded to those working with a limited number of engines. With this mindset, SpaceX not only builds engines, but cultivates an environment where innovation and improvement are woven into the very fabric of the Raptor's evolution. As each iteration takes flight, it propels SpaceX closer to its overarching mission of transforming humanity into a multi-planetary species. On the other hand, the choice of materials and manufacturing techniques for the Raptor engine plays a crucial role in optimizing the engine production time. A key player in this technology is the specially formulated alloy known as SX500. Comprising a harmonious blend of copper, aluminum, and steel, the SX500 stands as a testament to SpaceX's commitment to pushing the boundaries of material science. Crafted with a focus on high strength, extreme temperature resilience, and oxidation resistance, this alloy bears a load of up to 12,000 psi of pressure while enduring the searing heat of oxygen-rich gases coursing through the Raptor's core. Beyond the choice of alloy, SpaceX engineers are actively engaged in a paradigm shift in manufacturing techniques, with a clear directive from Elon Musk to minimize the reliance on threaded fasteners. This drive towards simplicity and cost-effectiveness manifests in a strategic move towards welding interfaces, eschewing the complexities associated with threaded components. While threaded fasteners introduce vulnerabilities in the face of pressure, temperature variations, and vibrations, Welding offers a robust alternative, streamlining the manufacturing process and fortifying the Raptor engine against potential points of failure. The aim is clear, to distill the Raptor's construction to its essence, eliminating unnecessary intricacies and refining the manufacturing process for optimal efficiency. Additionally, there will also be a small number of components in the engine that are 3D printed. This might be surprising, but it's another process that Elon Musk wants to eliminate as much as possible. While 3D printing is a beneficial technology, in this application it limits the ability to scale up manufacturing, adds costs, and slows down production rates. If all of this sounds fairly simple in construction, that's very much on purpose. The goal with the Raptor is to reduce production costs as much as possible, and the faster, the better. Elon Musk's primary objective for the Raptor engine is to achieve a cost per ton of thrust under $1,000. To meet this goal, each Raptor engine should cost at most $250 grand to build. Finally, we cannot overlook SpaceX's Raptor engine production facility. The engine production takes place at the SpaceX facility in McGregor, Texas, situated halfway between Dallas and Austin. McGregor has been SpaceX's primary engine testing ground since the early 2000s, witnessing the inaugural tests of the first Merlin engines and early Falcon prototypes. The historical significance of McGregor is noteworthy, having served as a bomb factory in World War II and was later used by Aerojet Rocketdyne for rocket engine tests in the 1960s and 70s. Elon Musk acquired the McGregor site, breathing new life into it and bringing it into the 21st century of aerospace design. Traditionally, Raptor engines were manufactured in California and then shipped to McGregor for testing. However, to enhance efficiency, SpaceX has decided to shift the engine production to McGregor itself. This strategic move eliminates the need for a lengthy cross-country truck journey, expediting the iteration process. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section down below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.